Reprise du débat, continuing debate, the Honourable Member for Carleton. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Chacun a son. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Everyone has their story. And I'm hearing a lot of unhappy ones these days. The most common that I have heard from Canadians is that people think that they're losing control of their lives. It's not just the pandemic. This story includes young 30-year-olds living in their parents' basement because they can't afford a house that costs $800,000, which is the typical price for a home in Canada today. And they've calculated that they might never be able to buy a house. Their story is even worse because large investment firms and people who are very wealthy have gotten printed money, which the government made for them, to buy houses and real property in their communities and to rent out those homes to renters who might never be able ha to have their own home. I spoke with a young woman, and her story was that she started a business in the winter of 2020. But one time after the other, the government decreed shutdowns, and her dreams of being an entrepreneur died through government policy. I'm talking about immigrants who come here with an education that makes them a doctor or an engineer, but that can't work in their field because of bureaucratic obstacles. I'm talking about Indigenous people who want to use their natural resources to create jobs and pull their youth out of poverty but are prevented from doing so from governments. I'm also talking about Indigenous people who want to own their own house, but that can't because of rules imposed by Ottawa through a system that prevents that opportunity. And finally, I'm hearing stories from Canadians who were targeted for their personal choices. I'm vaccinated. I encourage others to do the same. But I understand that other Canadians made a different choice. And before insulting them, maybe we should hear their story. It's possible that those people have had bad experiences with medications medication given to them by their doctor, by mistake. Maybe they have an unrecognized medical condition. Maybe in other countries they've had experiences where their government lied to them. And now they are distrustful every time a government tells them to do something for their own good. But instead of listening to the stories of Canadians who, have, who are hesitant, instead of saying, I understand why you're scared and I'm here to answer your questions, I will try to persuade you. But if not, you're still part of our Canadian family. Our government took an insulting position in order to attack those people. The Prime Minister with his own story of racism, wanted to insult others, people he doesn't even know. He tried to get rid of truckers, or rather fire truckers, people who work in a truck all alone 22 hours a day, who perhaps have the least contact with anyone else, 
are now being targeted with mandatory vaccination. That's why protests ended up here on Parliament Hill. But there's something positive. Freedom is on the move. Freedom is on the move, my friends. All throughout the country, in Alberta, at midnight, the vaccine passport was withdrawn. Point of order. The Honourable Member for... Mirabel. For Mirabel. My apology. Yes, Mr. Speaker, the current debate is on C8. I'm wondering if the member for Carleton is uh, perhaps off topic, considering the subject of the day. I'm sure we all try to be relevant in our speeches. The honorable member for Carleton, for the block, <laughs> freedom is always an issue. Mr. Speaker, in Saskatchewan, the Premier announced an end to restrictions and the vaccine passport. The Premier of Quebec made an announcement about public health measures. Prince Edward Island is starting to grant more freedom to its citizens. And now there are even Liberal MPs who are starting to get up to oppose the approach, the partisan approach that the government has taken to courageous MPs who are speaking against the Prime Minister's position and in favour of Canadians' freedom. And so, Mr. Speaker, I want the government to give freedom back to people, eliminate mandatory vaccination, allow public servants to return to work, and ensure that every Canadian can retake control of their lives. Mr. Speaker, our goal should be to ensure that Canada is the most free country in the world for every Canadian, so that every Canadian... Point of order, the Honourable Member for Lac-Saint-Jean. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I understand that my Honourable colleague is uh, on his uh, stump speech, but uh, and we know freedom is important to him. And so is independence for Quebec. Once again, let's try to come to the subject of the bill, the Honourable Member for Carleton. We see that the Bloc Québécois is afraid, and they're trying to get me to be quiet. It's a good sign. Mr. Speaker, we will give freedom back to Canadians and we will make sure that everyone is in control of their own story. That's the story that, that's the approach we want to take as Conservatives. Has their story. And the story that I'm hearing right now is that people feel like they're losing control of their lives. Whether it's the young couple living in their parents' basement, even though they're 30 years old because they can't afford an $800,000 house and are calculating that they may never be able to own a home. Whether it's the immigrant who comes here as a doctor but is blocked by a bureaucracy from ever doing that job or getting a license to practice. Whether it's the First Nations community that wants to harvest its resources to lift itself out of poverty but is blocked by government gatekeepers. Mr. Speaker, or more recently, whether it is the countless small business people who have been flattened by endless lockdowns and rules that often seem to have no link to science, or whether it is the trucker who has been dutifully putting the goods and services in our communities on our shelves and on our kitchen tables and now is called names and prevented from doing his or her job by a Prime Minister who is not interested in listening. Now, there, I am vaccinated and I encourage others to do so, but every person has their story. They have their reasons. They might be medical reasons, cultural reasons. They might even have learned, they might have had a, an unfortunate medical experience with prior medical prescriptions that have prevented them from making that decision. 
But that decision must be theirs. Their bodies belong to them. They are masters of their own decisions. And instead of listening to these people, the Prime Minister has insulted them and name-called them and left them with no choice but to, to engage in legitimate and peaceful protest. If he wants to put an end to those protests, if he wants to actually reunite the country, then he should do what others have begun doing, because freedom is on the march yeah, in this country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saskatchewan, Alberta, Prince Edward Island and Quebec are beginning to lift these restrictions. At midnight in Alberta, the vaccine passport came to an end. And people across the country are showing their support for re re uh, starting freedom in this country, including two of the Prime Minister's own members of Parliament. Mr. Speaker, let's get these restrictions out of the way. Let's open up our economy. Let's bring back freedom. Let's make Canadians the authors of their own stories again. Yeah. Question.